I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and five years ago today I released the very first episode of Dye Pot Weekly and here we are at episode 400. I really cannot believe how long it's been and how many dyeing adventures we've had over these last five years. Now the first episode of Dye Pot Weekly was not my first dyeing video ever, but it was the first video in my commitment to publish and post videos regularly and to really dive in and challenge myself to explore the craft of dyeing yarn. And today I wanted to share a very special video where we are going to dive into depth of shade, but we're going to look at depth of shade on the more qualitative side versus the more math side, which I have explored in videos like the math of yarn dyeing in the past where I talk about how to calculate depth of shade. Now before we jump in, what is depth of shade? Depth of shade refers to the number of grams of dye you use per 100 grams of yarn. So a 1% depth of shade would be 1 gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn or fiber that you're dyeing. Usually when I'm comparing depths of shade, I will do that in two ways. One of the ways is to compare the color to itself on the same yarn base. I'll say, okay, I'm going to dye this at a low depth of shade to get a lighter color or a high depth of shade to get a deeper color, all of the same color. Or I might use it to compare how pigmented two colors are. For example, a 1% depth of shade of true black is way deeper and more saturated than a 1% depth of shade of silver gray. And so the goal of today is to sort of drive home the point that the depth of shade percentage doesn't give you a lot of information without also seeing the color and knowing the color. Because a 1% depth of shade of a pastel, again, is gonna be a lot lighter than a 1% depth of shade of a pigmented color like a black. And so my plan is to really push it today. And we're gonna look at some extremely high depths of shade of some colors going as high as 8% or eight grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And then also going to the low end and looking at some 0.1% depth of shades of some other colors. But before we jump in, please make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss any new videos. Today we are going to look at two really saturated colors of Dharma Acid Dyes, Toner Black and Teddy Bear Brown, and two more pastel colors, Sand Dune and Champagne. Champagne probably has almost no pigment at all, uh, and Sand Dune is a pastel but has, I think, more pigment uh, than Champagne, at least I think. For our explorations of depth of shade today, we're going to look at a variety of high DOS and low DOS. Uh, with our toner black, which is probably the most pigmented of the four colors, we are going to look at a 1% depth of shade, which is often a standard starting point that I use for a lot of colors. But then we're also going to look at a 0.1% depth of shade to show a less saturated version of this color. For the champagne, which is our least pigmented color, we're gonna go for an 8% depth of shade. I don't think I have ever pushed a color this high before. Usually I don't go much higher than 2%. So I'm curious what will happen when we take eight grams of this dye and try to dye just 100 grams of yarn. For our sand dune, it is a lighter color, but I wanted to do this at a 1% depth of shade. I thought it would be fun to compare the trying to get really pigmented champagne, which will probably be a little orange, I think maybe, uh, to the sand dune. And then finally with the teddy bear brown, we're gonna go on a less saturated version of the color and look at a 0.1% depth of shade. I put on my Deluxe Forever respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves and started measuring out the five samples. Today I'm not making stock solutions. I am measuring out the amount of dye I need for each of these samples and then dissolving it in an unspecified volume of warm tap water. This is not the most accurate way to do things, especially when I'm measuring out 0.1 grams of dye, which I'm doing with the Teddy Bear Brown and Toner Black. 
If I wanted to make this more reproducible, it would be better to make a stock solution and then take a portion of that stock solution to do this. Given that the purpose of today's video is more qualitative than quantitative, it's not that important if the colors where I'm measuring out less dye, if that shade is very reproducible or not, depending on the accuracy of my scale. The goal is to look at uh, different depths of shade from different colors and to see what we can see from that information. In this kettle I have eight cups of water and now I'm going to add our eight grams of champagne. I thought that it would be worth starting with our presumed less pigmented colors but looking at that and given that there's eight grams of dye in there that's really not a lot of color at all and I will be filling the containers with more water to rinse out the excess dye as needed. But a lot of times with colors, they will look so dark and you can't always see the bottom. And here I can see the bottom and there's pigment to it, but really not much. But I'm gonna rinse out this cup again. So now there's really not much color left in there. And since we have no acid in here yet, but we're gonna go ahead and add the yarn and just get a feel for this color. And so for this color, we are gonna dye 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And our champagne color here is a beautiful kind of peachy orange. It is very, very pretty. Uh, but also really not pigmented and really not brown, which I knew from using this color before, but it's really not a brown. <laughs> and to our dye bath, I am going to add eh, three tablespoons of white vinegar. I don't mind if the color is a little more tonal versus a solid, um, but we want to get a feel for the intensity and the depth of the color. Uh, and so I'm now gonna take this to the stove and heat it up for at least 30 minutes on heat, plus more time if needed if all the color has not yet absorbed. But we'll check in after about 30 minutes and let's go ahead and start on our next color. Now in comparison with the eight grams of our champagne color, here is 0 0.1 grams of the toner black acid dye and when I add this to the pot and sort of we're gonna stir it up I can see the bottom a little bit like sometimes if I move it you can see like a little bit but not really it is pretty opaque um, we also have eight cups of water in here to start I am gonna rinse out the container which I mean there's not really any other color there but having a little more water won't hurt it and now there's no acid in here yet, we're gonna add our yarn. And so you can see here that we have a gray. It is going to be, I think once all the color absorbs, a medium gray to pastel-ish. Um, but don't forget that with that champagne color, we have 80 times more dye than what we have here. It's a difference of 80. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and add three tablespoons of white vinegar. Toner black is not the black I use the most, um, but I'm excited to use it here today. And I will say for a gray, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous toned gray, a very true gray. It doesn't feel blue, it doesn't feel purple. I should use this color more often. Um, but even without adding heat, a lot of this color has absorbed to the yarn, but like with the champagne, I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for at least 30 minutes to set the color. I was going through some photos of some old color mixing I was doing, and I think that this 8% depth of shade of champagne looks a little bit like maybe the 0.25% depth of shade of a blazing orange. But don't forget that there is a 40x difference in the total number of grams of dye used in those cases. There is a tiny hint 
uh, some yellow left in the pot, but most of the color has absorbed. Ooh, I wonder if there's a little bit of some breaking uh, to it. It's very pretty, but anyway, I'm gonna let this cool so we can wash it. And we'll take a look at our low depth of shade of black, but then we'll reset the pot to do another color. Toner black is a color I think I'm gonna need to play with more. Um, this is a very, very nice gray. And I think it could be a fun video to look at the difference between toner black here and true black, especially at the lower depths of shades to see if the actual tones of the colors vary. I know that toner black has some red and yellow pigments in it, um, but all of it has absorbed. So I'm gonna set this aside to cool and let's dye the rest of the yarn. I reset to dye our browns, starting with our 1% depth of shade of sand dune and then our 0.1% depth of shade of teddy bear brown. Now the sand dune is not a pigmented color at all. It is a beautiful, cool toned, sandy brown color. I really, really love it. It is absolutely a brown. It doesn't feel too purple or too pink, which is probably why it's a good one to have in your collection because when the teddy bear brown was a little more pastel, I feel a little bit more purple in it. But the interesting thing about this stage, at least to me, is that the 0.1 grams of teddy bear brown versus one gram of sand dune, the teddy bear brown looks like a darker color. It looks like there's more actual pigment in there. And well, this just excites me because for this whole thought experiment, it's nice to have examples to show where when you're comparing two different colors, the depth of shade doesn't mean which color will be darker. And so you can have a 1% depth of shade color that is very pastel, and you can have a 1% depth of shade color that is very pigmented. It just depends on the color that you're dyeing. Like before, our dye baths started with approximately eight cups of water. I added the dye, added the yarn, and then added three tablespoons of white vinegar. After 30 minutes, I removed the yarn from the dye bath and went to go reset for our final color. Now we are gonna look at a 1% depth of shade of toner black. And this color will be the one that is the most pigmented of all the colors we have looked at today. It's going to look the darkest objectively compared to all of the other colors. Just because blacks by their nature are very pigmented colors and per gram, I think there's a lot more punch, a lot more pigment in there. Once again, we used eight cups of water. I added the dye and then the yarn and then three tablespoons of white vinegar and went to go heat for at least 30 minutes. And then once all of the color had absorbed, I removed the yarn to cool so we could wash all of our yarn together. Let's start by washing our toner black colors. Here, the difference between our 1% depth of shade and 0.1% depth of shade is fairly obvious. Now, I would say even wet, our 1% depth of shade feels a little bit more charcoal gray than say a true black. For colors that pigmented, you probably do need to go above 1% for it to feel black. And I guess especially it holds true for black. But now I'm adding um, some clear dish soap here. Toner black, again, I have not a color I've used a lot. Um, and I think for non-speckled applications, I should use more. And I also should do that comparison, I think I mentioned, between toner black and true black, um, which I use frequently. And see, it's one of them more pigmented than the other. Uh, do the tones of the paler grays differ? And things like that. I'm not seeing any color bleeding here, so I'm gonna rinse out the soap, and then we're gonna look at our browner shades. Here we have our champagne at the 8% depth of shade, a 0.1% depth of shade of teddy bear brown, and then a 1% depth of shade of sand dune. And I am really happy, not having tested where these depths of shades are, that we have an example of similar colors where using less dye gives a color that looks deeper. Uh, and I'm excited to have finally dyed something at an 8% depth of shade, because we haven't done that. We'll take a closer look at all of these colors once the yarn is dry, uh, but there are 
I guess, some things to think about again here. And, but as I add some soap, we can still think about the main point here today in that the depth of shade is not an absolute number talking about the how saturated a color is. It's really a reference to the particular dye color that you're using and how much of that you have used. Because, yes, this is a very pigmented champagne color, but overall in the absolute is not a very pigmented color. Uh, and so, yeah, but it can, it can be helpful for comparing colors to each other. Like you can learn like, oh, okay, if I wanted to get this color with blazing orange, I would use a lot less dye. It can help mathematically in those kinds of ways, I suppose. But overall, uh, the depth of shade you can use with a particular color also varies. Like, I don't think I would necessarily use an 8% depth of shade, certainly not of a fluorescent color. That would bleed like wild. So, but anyway, <laughs> I am going to finish rinsing out uh, the soap from this yarn. Again, no bleeding. And then I'm going to put everything through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back for some conclusions. And here is the yarn that we dyed at Depths of shade ranging from 0.1%, which is 0.1 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn, all the way to 8%, where we had 8 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. I am going to remove the sand dune and the lightest toner black so we can take a look at these three colors. The 1% depth of shade of toner black is the deepest color that we dyed this time. And it is definitely darker <laughs> than our champagne, even though the champagne had eight times as much dye. But our champagne also had 80 times as much dye as this teddy bear brown. And it's a brighter color, but I wouldn't say that it's darker or more saturated than this brown at all. And so, one of the reasons why we did this in the first place was to show that the depth of shade that you used when you're dyeing a yarn doesn't tell you how saturated that color is. That's the whole point of this video. If we look at the 1% depth of shade of sand dune versus the 0.1% depth of shade of teddy bear brown, this color has 10 times as much dye as this one. But what the difference comes to is the pigment within that dye. Sand dune probably has a lot of filler. There's probably a lot of something in there that does not create pigment, that just dissolves in the water and rinses right out. But this color was developed with the filler so that way we could get this beautiful sand color. A color that if you were to take the teddy bear brown and go even lighter, my guess is it would be a little too pink, because where this is a little pastel, it is a little bit more pink leaning. And so I don't think would give us as awesome as a sand color. And so I think that premixed pastels are developed specifically for the hue that you're going to get when you use it in the pastel tone versus the hue that you see when it's really concentrated. And coming back to the champagne, that makes sense. Champagne as a color is a little bit golden, but is very much a pastel. And so I would never look at this color and think, ooh, that's champagne. I would look at it and say, ooh, that's a really lovely peach. But if you want a peach color, go for a peach dye where you can use it at even a one or two percent depth of shade to get a beautiful peachy color. Using eight grams of this color is, oh, I mean, it's fun to do for an experiment, and so it's not a waste in the terms of this video, but otherwise is a bit of a waste. Now, Dharma does price their dyes a little bit based on cost. So a pastel like sand dune or champagne is cheaper than a saturated, a more saturated color like toner black or one of the more expensive ones like electric violet. So it's not as big of a financial waste as it seems, but if you can get like a similar hue using 0.1 grams of one color versus one gram of a different color, 
If you're wanting a deeper color, don't try to get a deep color using sand dune. Use one of the other browns that exists. The older Math of Yarn Dyeing video is an excellent example of how depth of shade is really referring to one color versus itself. If you have two similar colors, one's a pastel, one isn't, the depth of shade numbers can't really compare one to another, except to say, okay, maybe at this particular depth of shade of one color, you can get a reasonable match for this other color. Today's video is really, again, to show, I guess, that similar conclusion, but to look at in the absolute sense. Unless you know what color of dye and brand of dye is being used, saying the depth of shade doesn't immediately tell you if you're going to be dealing with something that is a pastel or if it's going to be incredibly saturated. We have four medium to eh, maybe not quite pastel, but light colors here. And the depth of shade that we have here ranges between 8% all the way down to 0.1%. And so while a 1% depth of shade is a reasonable starting, starting place to get a saturated color for many colors, if you're dealing with a premix pastel, like the sand dune or the champagne, it's really not enough. And so really those premix pastels should be used to get the beautiful pastels that they were, the recipes were developed in order to achieve. I mean, that's the goal and the intent behind those colors. And I'll be honest, I wanted to know what an 8% depth of shade of champagne would look like. And so this was a really good excuse to do that. Uh, is this type of video, which has a bit of a random cross-section of depths of shade, something that you would like me to do again in the future? I am happy to look at single colors at various depths of shade. I've done that many times uh, over the course of the years here, including yellows and a lot of neons, and I enjoy doing that. But something about this today was also really, really fun. But really, the best way to get a feel for your color depth uh, when you're using a particular brand and a particular dye, the best way to do that is to play with your colors because the more you use them and play with them, the better feel you get of how the colors look on yarn and how much of each color you might need to use or which colors you need to use just a little bit of and things like that. And it could absolutely be worth taking the time to look at all the colors in your collection at a 1% depth of shade, to see what those colors are, to see which colors end up feeling way more intense and which are way more pastel. Because even having that amount of information then can help you when it comes to color mixing and creating fade sets because it gives you a better starting place of where you may want to start without even going through the triad color mixing exercise. At the beginning of this introduction, I talked about two ways how comparing depths of shade is helpful. It's helpful when you're talking within one color and comparing that color on the same depth of shade on different yarn bases and things like that. So that way you know, okay, to get the same color that I'm seeing with my eye, I might need to use more or less dye. It's also helpful to understand how pigmented a color is. And so by comparing a 1% depth of shade of two colors, like our sand dune and toner black, you can see, okay, there's a lot less pigment in that sand dune, which is something that we knew already, but sometimes it's something that isn't quite as obvious until you play around with the color. And so colors like Frozen and Caribbean Blue, both are really, really bright, but Frozen has a lot less pigment, so you need a lot more of it to achieve a similar bright blue. I cannot believe that this is the 400th episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and that I have been releasing over two videos a week for over five years. I started doing two videos a week while my Kickstarter was still happening. But in that Kickstarter, the goal was to commit to 25 episodes. And my goal was to encourage me to start posting regularly and to take 
YouTube more seriously and still have fun and learn and grow as a dyer. And I think that I have achieved that. Now there is still so, so much more to learn. I don't think you're ever done learning, but I know there's still so many more things that I want to explore. So please, again, make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications. This is the biggest way that you can help support the content here. In addition to these 400 episodes of Dye Pet Weekly, I have many of other bonus dyeing videos vlogs, knitting tutorials, live streams, unboxings, and more. There's a lot of fun content and I am so excited and inspired to continue to create fun color experiments and explorations. As I said, subscribing is the biggest way to support the content here and engaging with the videos. But there are other ways that you can support the content. You can join to become a channel member through YouTube and you can get access to some fun Chemnitz emotes and membership badges next to your name that'll be visible in the live chats and comment sections. I also have a Patreon. Uh, you can find more at patreon.com slash Chemnitz and I'll provide a link down in the description to a post where I talk about the difference between the perks that I offer through Patreon and through channel memberships. Finally, there's my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, which is filled with hand-dyed yarn that has been featured in my videos. There might be the occasional skein that was not featured on camera, but almost all the yarn has in the description and is labeled with the title of the video and the date when the video was published, so that way you can watch me dye that yarn, adding another element of fun to something that was handmade. Another big anniversary is coming up, and pre-orders are currently available for the Chemnitz Hanukkah samplers. And this is going to be the fifth annual Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Every night during Hanukkah, plus a few nights after, I will have a new yarn dyeing video featuring a lot of different colors and techniques. And the Chemnitz Hanukkah samplers include a wrapped mini skein from each of the eight nights, plus a ninth bonus for 100 grams total. And they're wrapped so that way you can unwrap them while watching each of the videos. And then you have a lot of different types of colorways in hand that you can play with. Whether you want to incorporate them all into some kind of scrappy project, or if you want to swatch them and finally answer the question, I wonder how that would knit up. Or crochet or weave. I don't want to leave other types of yarn crafts out. I personally knit, crochet, and weave. <laughs> Each of the Hanukkah samplers also come with a Hanukkah card signed by me and a lot of other fun extras that have some handmade touches to them. And so the whole thing is a lot of fun. I put a lot of time into it. And so I really hope that you will go and pre-order yours today. Honestly? I feel like it was just yesterday that I was planning for episode 300 and 200 and 100. I mean, I am a little bit in shock. And I know that like, as I edit videos, I see the episode numbers creep up and up and up. But it's still amazing to me that we are this far. And I'm so much further than when I tried to speckle with Kool-Aid powder for the first time, which is what I did in the very first episode. I have come such a long way. I have learned so much about the differences between different types of dye, between using superwash and non-superwash yarn, and things like that. And I still have so many questions, so many things I want to explore. And I want to thank you all so much for joining me on this color journey because it really has been an adventure and a journey and it's been a pleasure to share everything I learned and the mistakes that I sometimes make along the way with all of you. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to see what beautiful colors we create going forward.